Hello and welcome to another video from Double RL. In this video we're going to give you a behind the scenes look here at Double RL. And it's one of a couple of videos that we're going to do specially for our subscribers this week. Um, a couple of weeks ago on Twitter I announced we were going to do a uh, subscriber appreciation week uh, as opposed to doing a subscriber appreciation video. Um, back around Christmas time, yeah I, I know it was a couple months ago, um, we uh, hit the thousand plus subscriber mark. I think now we're over 1,500 subscribers headed towards 2,000. Um, so if you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, we can try to get to 2,000 subscribers. Um, we also appreciate any promotion you do of the channel. Uh, we, we always appreciate that when folks recommend the channel. Um, so I know um, over the last couple of months we've been we kind of slacking off a little bit on the videos. I was quite busy with work. Um, so the good news is um, that's kind of eased up quite a bit and I've got a bit more spare time on my hands so uh, we're going to be able to knock the videos out on a more regular basis. Um, I'm also um, kind of changing the emphasis just a little bit on, on Double RL. So we're going to try to um, give you guys some more regularly scheduled programming on the channel and uh, get some uh, cool stuff going on the website as well. So um, I know I announced on Twitter um, like I said, we were going to do the Subscriber Appreciation Week. Unfortunately, as soon as I announced it, um, I got a pretty nasty stomach virus. Uh, so I was out of commission for a couple of days. So uh, then last week, I had to kind of basically catch up on work uh, because I was out sick for almost a week. So um, I finally am caught up on work and uh, caught up on some of the projects. Uh, so I'm in a position to uh, go ahead with the uh, subscriber appreciation week. So we're going to be kicking out videos at least um, daily. Uh, you may see two or more videos each day as well depending on um, what kind of progress I make. So um, what you're seeing here is our double uh, URL website and so basically um, folks have, have asked me to uh, improve the website quite a bit so this is our, our first attempt uh, at improving it. Um, so here you can see we have our, our Twitter feed is over on this side, so you don't have to go to Twitter side anymore. You can just uh, go to www.rail.co.uk or www.rail.com and uh, you'll be presented with this. And over here on the opposite side we have uh, all the latest videos um, on our channel. And this is currently just kind of a temporary carousel, so it's got some photographs that we own of various different locomotives. When you click on them they take you to related parts of the channel. Um, up along the top, um, you have links to uh, our YouTube channel, various different playlists on the YouTube channel. Uh, our photo gallery will be coming up pretty soon. And then here at the end, we have a Connect, which takes you to our Google Plus communities and, and, and so on. So if you haven't uh, checked out our Google Plus community, it's another way to stay up to date with the, the videos. Um, but yeah, so that's basically um, where, where the website is. So... Um, what I want to do in this video is basically give you guys an idea of um, how things come together here at Double RL. So uh, usually, uh, I, like most, th most things, um, most of our projects either start with a purchase from Hattons or Rails of Sheffield or eBay. So uh, just to give you an idea, because I'm based here in the States, I have to sort of be a little bit more selective about my ordering from, from Hattons and, and Rails of Sheffield mainly because I pay a lot of money for, um, for, for shipping and handling. So um, I prefer to use Hattons mainly because they have the DHL uh, one day, two day delivery. So once they dispatch it, I usually get it within one to two business days. In fact, uh, with the Garrett, they shipped it out I think on a Thursday and I got it the Friday afternoon, which is the next day delivery, which isn't bad for about five, you know, about 10 pounds or so in, in shipping that they charge. However, um, when I place not pre-orders but regular orders. Uh, it's usually worth my while picking up a couple of extra items uh, just to justify the, the cost of the shipping. So for example, uh, this here is one of the special offers that I picked up uh, a couple of months ago. It's the uh, Bachman Branch Line uh, Class A4 Robinson Railway Operating Division version. It's a uh, 280 heavily uh, weathered uh, steam locomotive. Now, this is actually a special limited edition from Hattons as well and it, it's a fantastic locomotive and uh, it, its re recommended retail price is just over 148 pounds and it was marked down to I think uh, 79 pounds right now so it's almost half off and uh, it's definitely uh, worth uh, checking out and uh, 
it, we're going to be uh, doing a video on this um, over the next couple of days. So um, this is usually, like I said, where, where stuff starts. So I'll order an item off of Hans, and then um, while that item is in transit and on its way here, um, we'll basically use Wikipedia and a couple of other, uh, other online resources like uh, uh, railuk.info just to try to get as much information as we can on the individual locomotive or the piece of rolling stock and, and how it might be used. Also use Flickr and Google image search to try to find photos of the locomotive and we'll also search through our own archive to see if there's photos of the locomotive that we can actually put into the videos. So obviously for copyright reasons um, we can't take photos that other folks have done without their permission um, but a lot of times we'll have um, photos in our archive or we'll at least be able to look at photos online um, to get an idea of whether it's an accurate representation of the real thing or not. So this that's basically where, where stuff um, starts. So once it arrives here, um, the very first place uh, that anything gets dealt with is basically here on the workbench. So if I uh, move that out of the way and I'll zoom out a little bit, you can see here that we have a, a pretty basic looking workbench here down in my uh, home office in my basement and basically it's just a, a standard uh, plastic folding table um, and uh, basically just use it for everything right so um, here you can see right now uh, I've got the uh, garret in there and uh, it's been all glued back together from the few small missing pieces that were missing and um, it's, it's looking pretty nice so um, that's going to go up on the layout for review um, later tonight and we'll upload that video in the morning and then um, later in the week I'll, I'll probably take a stab at weathering it. I have another steam locomotive I'm going to do some weathering on first just to uh, refresh my uh, my memory of, of weathering before I go and tackle the, the garret. Um, now one of the nice things um, about the internet is um, despite the fact I'm here in the U United States, um, I can actually subscribe um, using the tablet here to um, BRM as well as to uh, Hornby Magazine. And so um, here you can see uh, it's, a, a, it's a previous version of the magazine. Basically, I can get a, a pretty nice uh, you know look at some of the stuff that's going on in the UK. Um, you have a lot of good hints and tips there, and, and so on. So um, they actually had a, a good series on weathering the garret, so I'm going to be using that as a guide um, to to get together and put the weathering on that particular loco. So like I said, when uh, a new loco comes in, so for example, I have this uh, Class 40 that we've had for a while from Rails of Sheffield. It has come out of the box, but I kind of put it back in because I didn't have time uh, beyond basic testing to, to do a review on it yet. So. When the locos come in, they basically come here to the, to the desk here and um, we'll open them up. And one of the reasons I, I use this particular table um, for this is that the table is white and it's kind of a, an enclosed space. So if any parts fall out or, or, or come off, I, I can easily find them on the table as opposed to trying to find them around the layout. Um, some of the other tools that I use, uh, we have the helping hands here, which is always good for doing things like soldering and, and holding items. Um, I have a whole selection of paint brushes, glues, paints, um, out over by the layout, which we'll show you in a minute. We also have a, a storage area with a ton of extra glue and, and so on. Um, you can see here, I've been uh, working on some projects. So you've seen the warship videos. Uh, there's the warship looking almost finished. So I'm gonna put some decals on that and should be good to go. Um, little few teasers. Uh, we have some train tech uh, signals that are coming up. Also happen to have, uh, I don't always get all the locos from uh, Hattons sometimes or, or Rails of Sheffield. Uh, sometimes we also pick some locos up on eBay. Uh, here in the States you can pick up quite a few deals um, at reasonable prices. So here's the Lima Class 60 that I picked up. Um, obviously it needs some lighting added to its LEDs and probably some weathering but it's uh, it's not a bad little, little locomotive and of course all that stuff gets done here. Now for weathering, as you know, we use these um, 
kind of two millimeter pieces of cardboard. Uh, it's handy because you can put the loco on it and uh, you know do all your weathering without like, damaging the, the weathering powders or paints on the table. And then you can just pick the whole thing up and take it outside to uh, varnish it with the spray varnish. And then you can just let it sit in the garage and kind of transport it around pretty easily. So um, that's what we use for that. Uh, just give you an idea of some of your stuff like you've seen a lot of the, the building kits that we do that are printable. Um, right behind me here I have a nice HP uh, laser jet and then we use it to um, print out on, this is actually US letter paper but it's about the, the same size as A4 so I can do 100% scale on it. So um, here later this week we're going to show you MalroyScenery.com's uh, 6 foot industrial brick wall and gates kit. I'm actually going to walk you through all the steps to actually build it. As you can see here, uh, it's a pretty simple kit. It's uh, a couple of pages. Uh, you have the base module, it's like the card. You have the texture sheets for the wall and uh, texture sheets for the gate and the instructions and so on. So it's a relatively straightforward project and we'll show you that um, over the next day or two. Uh, and while we're showing you everything behind the scenes here, I'll give you a bit of a, a trade secret. And that is, um, we have this on hand, which is the uh, Ellis British Railway Engineering Encyclopedia. So, like I said, normally we do a lot of research using Wikipedia and online resources. We'll double check forums and so on. But uh, just to make sure that everything's accurate and, and correct, uh, especially for some of the more technical videos that we do, um, we use this uh, book. So, I usually use, it, usually use it as a kind of a reference just to make sure that, you know, I, I'm citing the terms correctly and if it's a term I'm not familiar with I can actually get a actual description in here so rather than trying to guess or give you guys incorrect information uh, we want to try to make sure that it's as accurate as possible so um, I know uh, one particular guy who, who runs a, a, a kind of local review channel that's uh, Inner City 82 you might want to pick up a copy of this it might help you out make, make your, some of your videos a little bit more accurate and you can get it from uh, lulu.com so uh, yeah, it's pretty good like for example if I skim through it here um, there's stuff like tells you what an aspect sequence chart is it'll tell you what AWS is and and so on so it's a fantastic uh, resource just for making sure and uh, giving out accurate information so um, yeah so like I said um, all of our videos especially our review videos um, start off um, right here basically with, um, with with opening you know ordering the thing online doing the research like I said said online and then when it comes in we open it up and check it out and then uh, assuming it checks out okay uh, usually I put the NEM couplings on it here and then uh, I leave the detail off initially um, and we'll, we'll do follow up videos with the detailing but um, once it goes from here it goes out to the layout so um, what I'm going to do next is uh, Give you an idea, give you guys a, a look at the layout and uh, exactly how things come together out there. So, in terms of planning, uh, especially some of the videos and, and projects and so on, I actually still use uh, pen and paper. So uh, you can see here, um, here's an elevated track and calculations that I'm doing for for part of the project for the layout. Um, I also along the back here, anytime I have an idea for a video, we um, write it down here on the back, and you can see I've got. About, about 50 or 60 videos uh, already mapped out and in, in progress and then of course I have the subscriber video week list video here as well so there's uh, quite a bit of planning goes into it but usually I just kind of chalk down the ideas in that and then um, as it comes together we just make a note of it. Alright so I'm going to go and uh, quit waffling on now and give you guys a, a quick look at the layout and uh, we'll go from there. So, as you can see here, um, there's uh, quite a collection of uh, boxes here, so we don't throw away any of the boxes from any of the locos or anything like that, or rolling stock. Uh, you can see we've got quite a collection from Bachman through Hornby, Murphy Models, some uh, Mainline, Lima, some Triang boxes in there, and so on. And uh, you can see also down here we've got whole bunch of uh, spares and stuff like that in, in boxes and uh, if I come up here you can see 
Got um, usual storage stuff, more paints, a lot of glues, and so on. So this is actually all stored underneath the layout, so you can see there. That's the actual top of the layout if I pan it around like so. And then uh, you can see where the old layout was. Uh, we've now just used that for storage. So you can see there's all the controllers, a whole bunch of logos. And I also added some storage. We have these uh, wooden shelves that we got from um, I guess Target a long time ago. And use those for kind of storing some stuff. And you can see got a whole bunch of uh, heavy duty extension cables uh, powering the stuff up. So uh, if I uh, move along, so you can see here we uh, store a lot of locos here, and then of course we have the H&M controller, some old Tryon controllers, some Bachman controllers, and some more H&M equipment. And if I uh, pan down that way, you'll be able to see. Uh, all the various uh, locos we have in storage there and if I lift it up here you can see there's uh, quite a lot of locos there as well so uh, this section of the layout has been used for storage primarily while I work on the rest of it and um, that'll be changing soon and likewise you can see down here uh, basically the, the rest of the layout is storage area and there's a whole bunch of locos down there as well you also see I have some of the extra detailing um, kind of hanging there from the wall for now um, I use a sharpie to label what it's from and then you can uh, basically put that on when you find the time here you can see you got some uh, more locos and some uh, creative wiring I need to uh, fix that, some, uh, it's all the wiring for the lighting for the station buildings and so on. Alright, so that's basically um, the underside here of uh, double rail. So um, I'm going to go show you uh, some of the, the camera angles that we take. So if you've uh, watched any of the double rail videos, uh, you probably recognize uh, this camera angle and uh, this is basically um, one section of the layout that's uh, loosely based on on Sydney Garden Gardens um, near Bristol uh, and, and Bath, and basically um, th this particular camera angle allows me to capture the uh, locos uh, coming along um, down the line uh, with the the walls in the background, and so later on when we do the video editing, um, we actually can take out. Uh, this section here of the video by using various zoom techniques and other video techniques um, so that it, it doesn't actually uh, looks more realistic. And if I uh, pull the camera back slightly you can see that the same position um, is used to give the reverse angle shot from the uh, tunnel mouth there. And of course you'll see um, up here I still have to uh, put in the plaster cloth, um, which I happen to have on hand, just haven't had the time to, to get to that. So that's a project I hope to do in the next couple of weeks. Um, we can see we actually cut that out of the video um, by kind of doing that zoom in technique with the video editing. So uh, this is actually you know, one of the usual angles that we use. And I also uh, can use the section behind it. So if I take the video camera here and we uh, duck down and zoom back over here. You can see on the opposite space uh, right here I have a, a space where I can put the camcorder and it gives you basically that side angle view that you see in a lot of the videos. Alright, so another one of the video angles that you see quite a lot of at double rail is this one. Um, you can see I can get the, the two loop lines as well as the third rail line in the shot and now you can see down the end we have a lot of scenery built up. Um, there's a line here that's missing uh, it's basically I took it back a little bit um, to get that track elevation a little bit better up to the uh, viaduct, uh, the girder bridge over there. 
So um, hopefully in the next couple of days I'll get this back in place and it'll look pretty good. Uh, you can see here we have the Hornby Class 101 and here is the uh, Bachman Class 101. I'm going to be doing a review on that um, later this afternoon and you should see that video soon. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically this particular camera angle. Um, if I uh, move the camera over slightly, here you can see this is uh, our Chippenham Junction area and uh, it looks pretty familiar. There's the uh, other side of the bridge, tunnel math. Uh, you can see here um, the building shifted slightly, so I have to put in some steps there. So you'll be seeing that in an upcoming video. Uh, but I wanted to show you this particular spot right here. I have some uh, detailing for some wagons sitting in there. Um, but basically, if I drop this in here, you probably recognize. Um, this this particular angle, and you'll definitely recognize um, this angle right here, as you've seen in, in many videos. So um, it, you know it's quite simple to, to put together these shots, and uh, they can be quite effective, as you've seen in the videos. Um, and of course, if I move the camcorder down here, you can see a whole bunch of. DMUs and stuff that I need to run again. I haven't run them in a while. Um, and of course, just on the other side of the signal box, we have the other angle that we've used quite a bit at double ORL. You can see there, we've also uh, added those walls as you've seen before, and I've added some scenery to the base of the walls to kind of hide some of the gaps. Alright, and so that basically leaves. Um, the section over by the brewery, so I'm going to go and give you guys a quick look at that and then we'll wrap up the video. So there you can see the uh, this whole particular section of the layout and if I uh, pan it over here you can see where the brewery is and you can see where we've put the pub in place and where we're still uh, working on various things. So another angle that you've seen in the videos is uh, this one, as you can see, um, without doing any kind of effects on it, um, you can see that the uh, the video is, is pretty straightforward. Now what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll show you an example of the video technique we put in. So as you're watching this video, part of the video it's unprocessed, and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'll run the class 101 DMU up and down the layout so you can see it pre-processed and, and processed. So you can get an idea of um, the change we do to the video um, with some of the video editing techniques. And uh, once I'm done with that, I think what we'll do is we'll show you the full length of the other side of the layout. And then um, in an upcoming video, we'll show you the extension and some of the stuff that's uh, going on there.
Okay, so the uh, final thing I want to show you is how we actually create the video. So this here is a uh, Mac Pro. It's quite an old Mac Pro. It's from 2008, so it's uh, about six years old. And um, we're using the iMovie software. And what I've done is I've created basically a template. Uh, this template here contains our logo and our title sequence. So if I um, hit spacebar here, you can see the title sequence proceeding. And that's the same in all the videos. So by putting that template together, I don't have to keep regenerating this every time I want to create a video. So uh, what I did was I created a template, stored it in a, in a separate directory. And you can see here we've got double rail 203, so it's our 203rd video. And so what we do is um, basically, when I want to cop I'll copy the template into the double rail, whatever the sequence number is for that video. And uh, it gives me this, this sequence here to start with, so I don't have to mess with it. Uh, I'll change the title and I'll add the sequence um, for the, the intro uh, for that particular video and that is basically it. So in terms of um, here you can see we've got our uh, we have a clip from the behind the scenes video. So one of the techniques I use is a uh, video effect. So you can see here I double clicked on the video and it gives me this video effect sequence. I'm not so sure if you can see that too well but basically it allows me to apply different things. If you look over here in this screen, uh, there's flipped, there's film grain, there's dream, old world, sapia, black and white. So I typically use the sapia on the intro sequence. You'll see right after the double rail logo, there's usually an intro sequence uh, that describes what the video is. And that basically is um, what, what I usually use sapia on that particular uh, sequence. And then at uh, the end of the video, we use uh, black and white, as you've seen. Uh, sometimes I've used bleach bypass, and it kind of decolors the video a little bit. Um, I've used that in some of the sequences along with the black and white for different effects. And um, Old World, um, you've seen as well. If I can get a good sequence of the layout here, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Um, yeah, there you can go, you see it kind of creates this old world type effect. Um, but the main one that we use on uh, most videos is the, this uh, Viganet. Um, and uh, what this does is actually, as you can see here, it puts a kind of a circular kind of uh, dark kind of ring around the, the video. So it darkens the video a bit and then uh, it also blurs out sort of the edges. And the reason we use this, um, it, it kind of makes the video look slightly better quality than it actually is. And it also helps um, hide some of the wall and some of the imperfections that are on the caught in the corner of the camera. So for example, on some of the angles I showed you in the video, uh, you saw that there was um, you know, bits of the wall, kind of the edging maybe of the shot between the wall and the actual uh, wall of the house. So the Viganet will actually hide there's like a little corner piece that, that's showing and it'll darken it out enough that it's not visible on the, the YouTube video. And um, so once I'm done uh, doing the editing here, I'll save this out and then copy the files over to a system that's sitting in the basement. It's a uh, multiple multiprocessor Mac Pro. And uh, the reason I do that is even though this is pretty quick, um, a 15 to 30 minute video is going to take this thing four to five hours to render. Um, in order for use with, with YouTube. Um, the Mac Pro in the basement has uh, quad processors and so it, and it has something like 12 gigs of RAM so it will actually render um, you know probably within one one hour to an hour and a half what would take this machine about five hours to render. So um, normally what I do is I'll edit maybe four or five videos on this and then send them one at a time uh, to the Mac Pro for rendering, and then as soon as it's done rendering, I upload it uh, to the schedule on, on YouTube. So um, that's basically it uh, for this video. Uh, I just wanted to show you how we actually do the video editing. So what I'm going to do is actually edit this video and uh, get it up onto the website and onto YouTube as soon as possible for you. So um, we have quite a few other videos coming up over the next couple of days. Uh, I'm going to try to kick out at least one per day. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is we'll, today we're going to film probably four or five videos and put them into the schedule, so you should see at least uh, a daily video, and then uh, if I get enough time during the week, we'll, we'll put a few more up as well for various projects that we're working on. 
Um, but like I said, I have a little bit more time now, so uh, hopefully we'll get some of these things knocked out and uh, you enjoyed the video. So uh, I'm going to leave you with a couple of sequences of the, uh, the rest of the layout, and uh, until next time. Alright, so uh, this is part of the layout that you don't see a lot of. Uh, this is actually the far end of the layout, and uh, if it sounds like I'm in a bit of an echo, um, it's because uh, uh, the roof in this particular section is a little bit lower, and uh, I've got two doors on either side of me and a wall. Um, so you can see here, we have our station project is looking pretty decent. And if I uh, pan it up slightly, and across, you can see basically the entire layout. And uh, that's basically um, how things are looking right now. So uh, this whole section of the layout needs a ton of scenery work done to it. And as you can see, I've been using it mainly to store locos and rolling stock. So over the next uh, couple of weeks, that's going to change. I'm going to do a very big push here on this particular section. Uh, try to get some of it uh, all squared away, especially at least with the walls and the third rail and the balancing. So um, that's basically it. So hope you enjoyed this video and give you a good look in behind the scenes here at Double O Rail. Uh, as you can see, we have quite a lot of work still to do. And um, I'll also show you in an upcoming video the uh, extension part of the layout that we're uh, still working on. I hope to get the baseboards finished for the remainder part of the extension um, over you know, before Christmas. So um, hopefully by Christmas the whole layout in terms of track and baseboards will be complete. Uh, as you can see though, it's a pretty big project. Uh, this whole section here is uh, quite a few feet long. Alright, well that's it for me for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.